Today, we're talking robot dogs, MIT's tiny brains, and SpaceX's splashy announcement. I'm Emmett Short. The world is changing fast. These are tech headlines from Nia the Curve. Welcome to Knee the Curve. Don't get left in the past. Hit subscribe to stay up to date on spacesuit fashion tips. This is a comedy news show. It's the daily show for tech or last week tonight for futurism. So when you hear a joke but no audience laughing, it's really the same as every other show these days. So if you have a good time and you think a show like this deserves to make it out of the bedroom and into a studio that can accommodate a post-pandemic audience, consider sharing it, subscribing, becoming a patron, a YouTube member, or buying a fucking mug. Let's get into it. Boston Dynamics started selling their robot dog named Spot for quite a bit more than I paid for Fonzie. $75,000 and Spot can't even take the blame for my farts. 75K though, Spot must be able to do some pretty impressive stuff. Well. Boston Dynamics made a new video about what it can do. Oh, giddy up. That looks fun and only 375 grand to move a piece of plywood at two miles an hour. Technology, man. Wow, did it just like walk places and do yoga and dance? Cool. This dog is gonna be great at being unemployed. Three years ago when I first heard of this robot, it was grabbing people beers and doing the dishes with zero back talk. Never wants a please or a thank you or a bundle of colorful weeds. 75K one-time payment? Bargain. But now it's dancing and doing yoga? Hey, Boston Dynamics, if you're trying to make Spot more Gen Z friendly, why not program it so every time you give it a command, it just falls to pieces? This video is such a perfect response to the backlash they got from RJWs who were appalled <laughs> by Boston Dynamics previous videos. Twitter had a field day with these videos because of course they did. A website was created called stoprobotabuse.com and thankfully it was a joke website made by the ASPCA, which by the way, bravo ASPCA. However, they apparently could not get ASPCR.com because it was already taken. The ASPCR states their organization is exactly as serious as robots are sentient. So rest easy knowing as soon as robots are sentient, they'll have advocates standing up for their rights to assimilate each and every one of us. Great work, Twitter. They're 100% prepared to stand up against robot suffering instead of preventing robots from being programmed with the ability to suffer. They're fully prepared to be exactly one step behind. Anyway. Boston Dynamics gave in to Twitter, and at one point in one of their presentations, the presenter actually said this. I won't kick it, we're not allowed to do that anymore, but I'll show that it's stable. No, no, you can't kick the robot. That's immoral and triggering. You know what they can still do though? Sell them into servitude. Don't kick them. God forbid we demean these creatures we're selling? These creatures we're gonna load onto a boat and ship overseas so that people can watch them dance? Don't demean them though. Can't kick them. Now, Boston Dynamics has said it will enforce a code of use for Spot. So don't strap a bomb to it and send it into a school or you might, you know, void your warranty. Not a huge deterrent for someone that wants to go all Black Mirror. That dog voided its own warranty. Bad dog. Bad. MIT just announced how small their brains are, which has inspired me to also announce, frankly, most of the time, I don't have a clue. What's that? No, small brains are good. Means they're smarter. Of course. Yep, no stupids allowed. 
I don't have a clue how people who didn't go to MIT even watch this show. It takes big brains to comprehend the advanced level dick jokes I'm bringing to the table. Like the guy whose dick is so small, it's a particle and a wave. Quantum physics. Okay, researchers at MIT have described a new way to put tens of thousands of memristors on a chip that's smaller than a piece of, quote, confetti. Confetti. That's a strange choice. Who measures in confetti? No recipes call for five confettis of cumin. No building ever collapsed because a support beam was six confettis too short. No mechanic ever asked, is this imperial or metric or confetti? Confetti, yeah, well, it is 2020. I thought you MIT nerds were precise and familiar with Google, which will show you confetti in many different sizes. Are you just trying to pretend you've been to a college party? Because it sounds like you haven't been to a party since grade school. Not a lot of confetti at college parties, MIT. Hey, Harvard, if you know what's good for you, you'll invite these MIT kids to your parties. They're the ones programming the AI, and you don't want our new AI overlords soaking up their negative bias towards, you know, cool kids. That was a tough joke. That joke was definitely not for stupids. It was barely for smart people. Look, if there's a system that has inherent bias, an artificial intelligence will... Look, just, I put some stuff down in the description. Just read that and then come back and laugh or just acknowledge it with like a, huh? The key to making these brains on a chip possible is MIT's new Memristor design. Like a brain synapse, a Memristor can remember how it's supposed to respond to different stimuli. And if a normal Memristor is like your brain, MIT's new Memristors are like Elon Musk's brain. It's like how supercomputers used to be the size of a room, then they shrunk to something pocket size, and eventually they'll be in your bloodstream. But there's bound to be an awkward phase. You know, at some point, computers are gonna be just small enough to fit inside your body, but just big enough to get stuck in your pee hole. Those are gonna be the Nokia candy bar phones of the day. There's gonna be a whole generation of people that are like, remember when phones were so big they were getting stuck in everyone's pee holes? Yeah, I had one of those Nokia Kidney Stone 3000s, but the razors, whoo, those were killing people. I'm just saying, if confetti is a size, pee hole is a size. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, uh, but I'm pretty sure MIT's coming for your pee hole. SpaceX is hiring offshore operations engineers to help develop floating spaceports for Starship. Hey, 2020 has given us a lot of horrible news, so I would just like to repeat, SpaceX is hiring offshore operations engineers to help develop floating spaceports for Starship. If you're not familiar with Starship, I'm actually very genuinely surprised you found this channel. Welcome! And exciting news, uh, we're going to Mars. A hundred people at a time on this big ass silver thing. Because SpaceX's core mission is essentially Martian lives matter. One path is we stay on Earth forever. Um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Do you want the future where we become a space bearing civilization? and are in many worlds, and are out there among the stars, or one where we are f forever confined to Earth. And I say it is the first, and, and, and I hope you agree with me. Yeah. And if you're one of those people that hates billionaires and thinks this is only gonna be for billionaires, you can actually be happy about it because we'll be shipping a bunch of billionaires to Mars, where they will have a pretty solid chance of dying. But if you're not the type of person who wishes death on successful people, congratulations for not being a dick, you can also get really excited about this because the cool thing about Starship's business model is that it's gonna turn tedious 12-hour international flights into 45-minute astronaut initiation cruises. If you build a ship that's capable of going to Mars, what if you take that same ship and go from one place to another on Earth. So most of what people consider to be long distance trips uh, would be completed in less than half an hour. SpaceX is so confident about this plan, it's hiring engineers to build their floating spaceports. And why are they floating spaceports? This is badass and yeah, well, yeah, okay. super cool. But having these ports 20 miles off the coast is also totally necessary because they're gonna be noisy as hell. 
Just to give you some perspective, each Starship launch will be the same decibel level as approximately 123,000 Sam Kinnisons. <laughs> If you didn't get that reference, it's maybe like 200,000 Fran Dreschers. <laughs> or right around a half a million Bernie Sanders. So if you have any job experience building offshore floating spaceports, you might want to update your LinkedIn. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. But if you really want to help me keep this going, best thing you could do is share it. Social media is great, but I say text it. It's more personal. They'll watch it. Huge thanks to the patrons funding the channel. You guys are amazing. And I also have YouTube memberships now. So if you want more tech news and jokes, consider joining these awesome people. Thanks to Ryan Stout and Jeremy Huntley for once again, crushing it for me in the joke department. Check out their work in the description. Subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. If you leave me a comment, I will most likely respond or hit me up on my Discord chat room where I post view links to all my scripts so you can actually see how they develop and chat me up about joke ideas. Find me on Twitter and Instagram, or just click one of these videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.